Okay, right, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, the way of measuring intracellular calcium concentration uh, using the Fluo4 dye. Okay, so we've currently discussed um, how to actually load cells with Fluo4 dye, and we do it using the acetoxymethyl ester of Fluo4, okay? Um, we incubate the well of cells with a solution containing Fluo4 AM, okay? And what will happen is these acetoxymethyl esters of Fluo4, these can go into cells, and then in the cytoplasm of cells, and it's extremely important that it's only the cytoplasm of cells, not the endoplasmic reticulum, okay? In the cytoplasm of cells, these Fluo4 AM molecules can be deesterified. They can have their ester links cut by non-specific ester Esterases, and when their ester links are cut, uh, then they end up trapped within the cytoplasm of the cell. Okay, so you end up with cells loaded with fluofor dye molecules that can't get out of the cells. Okay, so we've now got a well then, or in fact, most likely, a 96 well plate uh, with cells loaded with fluofor molecules. Okay, so let me just draw one well, because we're, from now on, just going to look at the principle for one well, although most likely you'd be doing it for a huge number of different wells in a high-throughput assay. Okay, right, uh, so here is our single well, and then we've got the cells at the bottom here, and I'll colour them in in green. Now, these are all loaded with Fluo4 dye. Now, even before we have stimulated any receptors on the surface of the cells, the cells will have a basal level of calcium in the cytoplasm. Okay, so remember I told you that the cytoplasmic concentration of carbocol is usually around 100 nanomolar. Okay, so some of the Fluo4 molecules which are in the cytoplasm of each of the cells within the well, okay, will have calcium ions bound. So let's say that these uh, rectangles that I'm drawing here and now colouring in in orange, uh, so these are the Fluo4 molecules. Now some of them will have calcium ions bound and the ones which don't, they will still have fluorescent properties. They're not particularly brilliant, but they will still have fluorescent properties. So if we now shine blue light onto these cells, then we will get a certain amount of green light coming back, okay? And we will measure the intensity of that green light and that's the fluorescent signal. So, what I'm going to do is draw a graph here. Okay, so we're going to have time plotted on the x-axis, and we're going to have the fluorescent signal plotted on the uh, y-axis. And all this means is how much green light, how much light of wavelength 525 nanometers are we getting back from the well of cells. Okay, right. So... Before we have stimulated the cells within this well at all, we'll be getting some level of fluorescence, and we'll call this the basal level of fluorescence, corresponding to the basal concentration of calcium within the cytoplasm of the cells. Okay, right. Uh, now, if we stimulate receptors on the surface of the cell which are coupled to GQ-11 heterotrimeric G proteins, the example which we've been working with all along is the M3 receptor. Okay, and we can imagine uh, stimulating with some ligand, a nice example of which is carbocol, which is a nice stable ligand that we can be sure isn't going to be broken down. Okay, we can stimulate the cells with carbocol, Carbocol will activate the M3 receptors. This will lead to the production of IP3, which will then stimulate the release of calcium into the cytoplasm from the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so calcium concentration within the cytoplasm will go up. Okay, and you know it can go up to around 300, 400 nanomolar. Okay, that means that the number of Fluo4 molecules that are going to end up with calcium bound is going to increase large, uh, hugely, basically. Okay, so what you're going to get is you're going to get the fluorescent signal, therefore, going up, like so. Okay, now, it will go up, and then it's actually going to come down, and I want to make sure you understand why it's going to come down. Okay, so, why is the fluorescent signal coming back down to the basal level, and then it will stay at the basal level? Well, basically, it's because the calcium 
in the cytoplasm goes back down to 100 nanomolar. Now, I have not removed the carbocol. The carbocol is still there. The cell is no longer listening to the carbocol, okay? And this is a good lesson in itself. People often don't realize how quickly cells desensitize to ligands, okay? I am stimulating with all my might the cell with carbocol, but the cell is not listening to it anymore, okay? It has turned these receptors off, basically. The ligand might still be bound to the N3 receptors, but we've stopped the N3 receptors from being able to actually activate anything, okay? So, very quickly, the N3 receptors uh, are turned off, effectively. They're desensitized, is the uh, fancy word for turned off, okay? So, even though carbocol is bound to them, we stop them from doing any signaling, okay? So we've turned the N3 receptors off, so even though the carbocol is there, we've turned them off. So they're not going to be producing any more IP3. The IP3 that they did produce initially will all be broken down. The IP3 receptors will therefore close, because there's no IP3 anymore, okay? And then there are pumps on the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum, which will be returning calcium back into the ER out of the cytoplasm. Hence, calcium will go back down and fluorescence will go back down. Okay, right. So we have now got this rise in fluorescence which was produced by the addition of some concentration of carbocol. So we've added some concentration here. Okay, we've added a solution containing a certain concentration of carbocol. Okay, we would very much so like to turn this change in fluorescence into a change in calcium concentration. That's what we'd like to now do. Okay, so how are we actually going to do that? Well, to do it, you need to be clever, okay? And you need two values which are known as Fmin and Fmax, okay? And I'll explain exactly what these values are. Now, initially, I am not going to give you the motivation for why we want these values. I will explain exactly why we want these values later on, okay? But for now, it's going to seem rather unmotivated, and I apologize for that, but I still think this is the best way of doing this, okay? I'm going to explain to you what these values are and how we get them, okay? And then I'll show you why these values are essential for turning this into this. But for now, know that they are essential. Okay, they will be essential. You can't do it without them. Okay, so let me describe firstly how we get the F min value. So basically, you have to have finished with your cells, unfortunately, because getting these values is going to involve sacrificing the poor monolayer of cells down here. Okay, what we are going to do is, in the case of F min, we are going to add um, a solution which contains firstly a detergent which is going to lyse all the cells. Okay, detergents are emulsifiers. They mix water and fat molecules. Okay, the cell membrane is a fat layer. Okay, which is maintained because water molecules cannot mix with those fat molecules. Okay, the instant you put a detergent on cells, they lyse instantly. Okay, that's why your skin doesn't like being uh, exposed to washing up liquid too much and you get uh, dermatitis and things like that if you um, expose your skin to uh, strong washing up liquids too often. Okay, right. Um, so, detergents, we're going to add a detergent and it's going to lyse these cells. So we're going to basically destroy their structure. They're just going to become a lysis, um, a, well, a lysate, basically. Okay, so the um, detergent that generally is used is a detergent known as Triton X100. Now, that's not the only thing we're going to add to calculate F-min. We're also going to add something known as BAPTA, okay, which is a calcium chelating agent. It is basically just a molecule that is capable of binding to calcium. Okay, so let me just draw a picture for this. So here is our, let's say, our BAPTA molecule. And don't ask what it stands for. It's a massive great name that it stands for. Okay, and basically it is a molecule that is capable of binding to calcium. That's all we need to know about BAPTA. So when we add BAPTA, it's going to remove all of the calcium from free solution because all of the calcium is going to end up bound to the BAPTA molecules. 
OK, right. So, this is what we're going to do then. We're going to now add to our well a solution containing this detergent. What will the detergent do? It will burst all of the cells, basically, and they will spray their cytoplasm out everywhere. OK? The BAPTA molecules will then take all of the calcium ions and bind to them. We've added loads of BAPTA molecules so that all of the calcium that was in the cytoplasm of the cells, all of the calcium that was in the endoplasmic reticulum of the cells, all of the calcium that was in the extracellular fluid uh, that surrounded the cells, all of that is now bound to BAPTA so that there is no calcium in the free solution. That means that all of the fluorophore molecules, which are now just in this free solution, okay, because remember, the cells have burst open. So if we imagine this is the solution above the monolayer of cells, all the cells have burst open, so all the fluorophore molecules have been released into this solution now. Okay, and now we've removed all the calcium from this solution, so none of the fluorophore molecules have calcium bound anymore. So what are we going to see on the trace? we're going to see the fluorescence go down because now the fluorophore molecules which in when in the cytoplasm and in a concentration of 100 nanomolar calcium had calcium bound those have now lost that calcium so their fluorescent properties will have gone down okay so that means that the overall fluorescent signal we're going to get off this well is going to go down because some fluorophore molecules originally had calcium bound and they've now lost that so this value, this tiny little fluorescence value here, this is known as the F-min value. This is the absolute minimum fluorescent signal that the fluorophore molecules that were in the cells of a single well can actually produce. Okay, so this is F-min. It's the absolute minimum fluorescence that that number of fluorophore molecules that were in this well could produce. Okay, and the way we've got it is by lysing the cells so that we can then remove all the calcium from everywhere, basically, using the BAPTA. Okay, right. Uh, so that's how we find F-min. Now we're going to find Fmax, and we're going to do Fmax after Fmin. So now what we're going to add to this solution that's already been lysed, what we're going to add on top of this now is a huge concentration of calcium. Usually this will be in the form of calcium chloride. So we will pile calcium chloride in. We will put a huge great concentration of calcium chloride in. This will put a huge number of free calcium ions into the solution. The BAPTA that we added before in the F-min solution, which was added here, okay, so this is when we added the F-min solution, this will all end up completely saturating. We will add so much calcium that every single BAPTA molecule that we added ends up with a calcium bound, and also every single fluorophore molecule ends up with a calcium bound. So we add so much calcium that there is just too much calcium to go around, so everything that can bind calcium ends up with calcium bound, including all the fluorophore molecules. So what happens? Well, this happens. The fluorescent signal goes up and up and then gets to some peak and stays there then. Okay, and this absolute maximum value here, which is the maximum fluorescence that that number of fluorophore molecules could ever produce, that is known as the F max value. Okay, so these are the two values, and their names make sense. The minimum fluorescence is F min, the maximum fluorescence is F max. And you can imagine that these are reasonably important numbers to know, okay? And you can imagine how these are going to be important, potentially, in the conversion of fluorescence to calcium signal. So these are going to be very important. So this is how we find these values for the well. It does involve the sacrifice of the cells, but we've got the useful information now. Okay, so we've now got these two values, F min and F max. Okay, right. Uh, what we now want to talk about is how we're going to actually use these values to uh, calculate the concentration of calcium that well, the, the, cal the change in the concentration of calcium that corresponded to this change in fluorescence here. So what we would really like is to be able to cons calculate the concentration of calcium, of calcium uh, that was originally in the cytoplasm of the cell, calculate the concentration of calcium here, and subtract the two
to from one another. Okay, so we will move on to that question in the next video.